नमस्कार स्वागत है आपका समाचार एक्सप्रेस में मैं आपके साथ नेहा वर्मा चिकित्सा के इतिहास में पहली बार ऐसा हुआ है कि किसी की ब्रेन सर्जरी बिना बेहोश किए हुई हो जी हाँ ये सच है एक लड़की की ब्रेन सर्जरी हुई वो भी बिना बेहोश किए अमेरिका के एक अस्पताल में डॉक्टरों ने जेना स्टेड की ब्रेन सर्जरी का यह कारनामा करके ही नहीं दिखाया बल्कि अस्पताल के फेसबुक पेज पर सुबह ग्यारह पर ब्रेन सर्जरी प्रक्रिया की लाइव स्ट्रीम भी की इस सर्जरी की लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग के दौरान जेना डॉक्टर से बात करते हुए भी दिख रही है मेथोडिस्ट ग्लॉस के प्रमुख डॉक्टर निमेश पटेल ने बताया कि दरअसल इस तरह के ऑपरेशन के दौरान मरीज को लगातार बातें करते रहना होता है ताकि कोई गलती हो तो उसे सुधारा जा सके सर्जरी के दौरान जेना को लगातार कुछ तस्वीरें दिखाई जा रही थी ताकि यह पुष्टि हो सके कि उसकी सर्जरी में दिमाग के किसी सही हिस्से के साथ छेड़छाड़ नहीं की जा रही है सर्जरी ठीक कर तरह से हो रही है डॉक्टर ब्राटेल मिशेल ने बताया कि अगर इस सर्जरी के दौरान कुछ गलत हो जाता तो जेना सारी उम्र बोल नहीं पाती इसलिए हम उससे बातें कर रहे थे ताकि हमें यह पता लगता रहे कि सर्जरी सही दिशा की ओर बढ़ रही है इस लाइव सर्जरी को तेईस लोगों ने फेसबुक पर भी देखा यह सर्जरी जेना की उलझी हुई रक्त वाहिकाओं को ब्रेन से हटाने के लिए की गई थी जेना का कहना है कि उसकी इस सर्जरी को देखकर बाकी लोगों को भी मदद मिलेगी वीडियो में आप देखेंगे कि सर्जरी के दौरान लड़की डॉक्टर से लगातार बात कर रही है जब इस बारे में डॉक्टर से पूछा गया तो उन्होंने बताया कि इस तरह के ऑपरेशन के दौरान मरीज को लगातार बातें करते रहना होता है ताकि कोई गलती हो तो उसे सुधारा जा सके डॉक्टर्स ने बताया कि लगातार उसे कुछ तस्वीरें दिखा रहे थे ताकि यह पुष्टि हो सके कि उसकी सर्जरी में दिमाग के किसी सही हिस्से के साथ छेड़छाड़ नहीं की जा रही है सर्जरी ठीक तरह से हो रही है डॉक्टर ब्राटेल मिशेल ने कहा कि अगर इस सर्जरी के दौरान कुछ भी गलती हो जाती तो जैना स्क्रैड सारी उम्र बोल नहीं पाती इसलिए हम उनसे लगातार बात कर रहे थे ताकि यह पता चल सके कि सर्जरी सही दिशा की ओर बढ़ रही है मेथोडिस्ट ग्लॉस के प्रमुख डॉक्टर निमेश पटेल ने बताया कि लड़के के ब्रेन में रक्त वाहिकाएं आपस में उलझ गई थी उन्हीं को ब्रेन से रिमूव करने के लिए यह सर्जरी की गई सर्जरी के दौरान जीपीएस ट्रैकिंग सिस्टम भी एक्टिवेट किया गया था वो दिमाग के उन हिस्सों के बारे में बता रहा था जहां हमें सर्जरी करनी थी डॉक्टर निमेश पटेल ने बताया कि लड़की फिलहाल ठीक है announcement from Dr. Graham that they are about to get started with the removal of this lesion, this mass of blood vessels inside of young Jenna's brain, all while she is awake. So typically these brain surgeries can be done while the patient is asleep. In Jenna's case, because the, the, we'll call it a lesion, because this tangle of blood vessels is located next to, uh, right in her speech area, we wanted to make sure we keep her speech area preserved as best as possible. And so that's why we do what's called awake mapping. And what we're doing now, what the guys have done so far, the neurosurgeons have figured out a safe zone. And the only way to do that is basically test what parts of this, her speech are affected while she's awake, while they're stimulated. It. They've now accomplished that, and now they're entering into the brain. So that's why we do what's called. She's very active. She's asking John questions. Where is he from? You live in Houston. Tell me that. Um, so she is. Perfectly lucid at this point. That's right, completely wide awake. I bet she could text if, if we allowed her. Uh, she could get on Facebook right now, watch her maybe her own surgery. Um, she, yes, she's completely awake. This is a great job from Dr. Oak. And Dr. Patel, how long might it take them to, to actually remove that? I, I know obviously it depends on where it is and how big it is and everything else, but in general, is this a relatively quick part of the surgery and then she'll go back to sleep or how would you assess that? In her case, based off the images that we saw preoperatively or before the surgery, it looks like it is close to the surface. So if you have to dig out something and it's closer to the surface, it takes less time. I would assume just it would take maybe about 30 minutes to an hour once we're into the brain. If that long. And we're, we're going to end our broadcast here in a few minutes, but we'll stay and listen to Jenna a little bit longer. But after um, we go off the air, for lack of a better term, there's still a lot of work to be done, right? What will happen uh, after that, Dr. Patel? So then what we'll do is we'll make sure there's no other bleeding areas within the brain, and then they'll close the brain. They'll put the covering back on, and then put the bone flap back on. And when they put the bone flap back on, they'll fasten it with titanium metal fasteners. 
and then they'll sew the skin back together, and they'll take the clamp off, and then she'll be ready to be waking up. And what, what's typically the recovery time from this type of surgery, whether awake or asleep? So if it's asleep, yes. you have to recover from the anesthesia. And the anesthesia, because you've been asleep, and you have to take the tube out of the mouth. And so recovery like this takes about, uh, in the hospital, it takes about a day or so. Uh, in her case, I'd probably say about the same. But she's been awake, so I think it may be even less than that. So she can expect to spend a couple of nights here at Methodist Dallas, or yeah. at least one? Well, at least make sure she'll go to the intensive care unit tonight because, after all, she did have brain surgery. <laughs> so we do want to make sure that she doesn't have any type of bleeding or seizures or anything funny right after the surgery. We'll make sure that she's good for a day or so. And the way she's moving along, she'll probably a day or two days at the most. And then she'll go to what's called step-down status and make sure she's eating okay, walking okay. So all in all, to be actually more conservative, probably about three days, four days. And we're hearing some noises. It sounds like suction to me. You probably have a better handle on what, what they might be doing. Is that likely what that sound is? Yes, the pitch sounds like that of a suction. So, You know, when you hear that sound in the operating room, it makes you a little bit nervous. But the, su the, the suction is what? What's the purpose of that? Suction is to make sure that the field is clear. So the, the neurosurgeons, Dr. Mitchell and Dr. Graham, are looking at the brain. They are resecting now. I bet what they're taking is the lesion or the tangled vessels and they're using the suction to, in order to remove any blood clot around that lesion. That's my baby. I got her in Georgia. They're strategically doing, moving the suction. There are little valves on the suction. They can put their thumbs on where the suction is much greater or where it's softer. And so they're manipulating multiple things as they enter into the brain. Jenna is now talking about her dog, Paisley, who I met and who she would very much want to get as much attention as possible. She's telling John, the neuromonitor, about her dog. And she's just like, easy to That's You'd be surprised. Some of the things that people remember are animals, pets. They find a very uh, eloquent area of the brain and they're stored there. And people can lose their memories but as they get uh, after an injury. But one of the things they will always remember is their pet's names. And she's very comfortable talking about Paisley. I can attest to that whether yeah. she's in surgery or not. She's very proud of her dog. So that's smart for John to be talking to her about that kind of thing. Yeah. Look at that great smile. What a wonderful patient. What a motivated patient. You know, at Moody Brain Spine, we struggled with the idea of doing a Facebook Live brain surgery. But, um, but because Jenna was so forthcoming and she wanted to show the, the rest of the community that, you know, if you if you have this problem, you can, you can help fix it. And so she was basically a role model for us, and we supported her because of that. And one of the things she said to me when we first approached her about doing this is that she thought people had so many misconceptions about brain surgery. They've watched way too much TV, too many bad movies, and that by showing people this, um, it would not only educate them but raise awareness about just how far medicine has come and what we are now able to do literally while the patient is up and talking. And I would say mission accomplished. Absolutely. Absolutely. As you listen to Jenna talk, you may hear a little accent, especially if you're from Texas, and you might think she doesn't sound like she's from around here, and you're right. She's actually from uh, northern Illinois, about two hours west of Chicago, a community called Freeport, and I know there are a lot of people in that town who are watching this and a lot of people who have been spreading the message about Jenna and the surgery in that community. It seems like a very close-knit place, and so we want to give them a little shout-out here, as I know many, many hundreds of them are watching this right now. Jenna is, well, you can see for yourself, she's doing quite well. She's a rock star. I have no idea, but I know I can say, you know, and I can't tell them, but I want to be like, when they're like, talking with me, I want to be like, I understand, you know? You can see also the monitor up to the side there, it says 200, that's the IV fluids and things like that, medications going in a certain rate. 
to keep her oh, uh, from going. having any pain. Therapy, yeah, and mental patient. And I mean, Dr. Patel, this sounds like an overly simplistic question, and it probably is, but the fact that they are removing this thing right now and we are hearing her talk just like she did yesterday, this is all good, right? This is all perfect. This is fantastic. The fact that, that she is just able to have a general conversation with us. You can see Dr. Oak here. She's getting a little dry mouth. So he's giving her a sponge with water on it to wet her mouth. Anybody who's ever come out of anesthesia, that's a familiar feeling. That's right. That's right. You can yeah. see that she has something in her nose as well. That's how she's getting oxygen. She's getting oxygen by speaking like we normally would, but we're also supplementing the oxygen through her nose, through what's called a nasal cannula. And you can see that in the general public. Typically, when people have surgery, as you all know, they get intubated. Intubated means they have a tube put into their mouth. I know. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. I'm Brian, I also want to point out, look at her though. forehead. You see a big metal round thing there. I do. Yeah, that is, we have clamped her head in order to keep it still during the surgery. So this allows us to have a very accurate position in where we're going to go to take out the lesion. Jenna is smiling, she's laughing. This can't be overly comfortable for her, can it? I mean, a head in a clamp is no day at the beach, right? Yeah, not just the head in the clamp, her whole body. She can move it any time if she wants to. Now, she's laying on her side. Because she's laying on her side, her arm could be feeling numb, her legs could be tired, she could move about. But this requires her to have at least sound of mind of not moving the rest of her limbs. Her shoulder, you can see that's her shoulder that she's laying on, her right shoulder. Well, I think we're going to, to wrap up our live feed now. We've been here on for about 45 minutes, and I think we've given many thousands of people a nice taste of what was going on today inside operating room number 21 here at Methodist Dallas Medical Center. From this point, Jenna will in the near future go be put back to sleep. They will put her skull the piece of the, sc the skull that has been removed back on her head, and then she will be here at the hospital for a couple of days, perhaps, to recover. But Dr. Patel, again, all signs at this point are that this is could not have gone better. This, this has been close to perfection, yes. And I want to thank you for uh, being here Absolutely. to walk me through this. Dr. Nimish Patel, our chief of neurosurgery, who is an invaluable voice, quite literally, during this broadcast. We obviously want to thank... 25-year-old Jenna Shard, as she smiles in the operating room for being willing to do this, for being willing to educate the public. We also, of course, want to thank the uh, two men with ice running through their veins right That's now. That's right. Our two, two neurosurgeons, Dr. Randall Graham and Dr. Bartley Mitchell, who have done a phenomenal job and are something special to even let us do this. Finally, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. I'm Ryan Owens, the Director of Public Relations for Methodist Health System. Stay here on the Facebook page throughout the day, and we'll have updates from the neurosurgeons once they're all done and an update on just how Jenna is doing. Thank you all very much. We certainly hope you've learned a lot. We have. JBD Banquets lie here. Incredible Marriage Palace, Raj Gharana, and the finest banquet hall, Jyoti Garden. World-class catering, centrally air-conditioned, lush green lawns, state-of-the-art lightning. A perfect venue for wedding, launching and parties. Raj Gharana and Jyoti Garden at JBD Banquets Enterprise. As the latest cover of the video, bell icon to click on our channel. Ko like, share and subscribe. Thank you.